Good evening. Welcome to the Athens Public Library. Our guest tonight is a proud Athens East Sider. Besides being a musician, an avid lover of music and world travel, he is a linguist, language professor, academic researcher, published writer, and gourmet cook. He has taught at Western Michigan University, Ohio University, and abroad. He is passionate about sharing poetry, literature, cultural traditions, and traditional music with others. He has his MA in English, an MA in Linguistics, an MA in Political Science, and a doctoral degree in Education. Please give a warm applause of welcome for Dr. Don Asai. Thank you. It's a nice introduction. Uh, and also, I would like to thank all the other staff at the Athens Library for making this possible. I would like also to thank all of you for coming. And this will be like drumming 101. I'm going to provide you with just some simple like lessons and see if, uh, you know, sometimes for musical instruments, they say that every stroke that you want to really learn, you should practice it 10,000 times. <laughs> but I want to say that you don't really need to learn yeah. <laughs> because tonight, Possibly, if you are interested, by the end, you will be Okay. This is an introduction to traditional, the presentation is an introduction to traditional Persian percussion instruments including, this is called DAF. Able to play one of these musical instruments, one way or the other, because I will tell you <laughs> how you can do that. So we are going to start. I first included this because this is, this used to be, type of fruit that grew only in Persia, pomegranate, long time ago. But later on from Persia, it went to other places. And in the United States 20, 30 years ago, that wasn't a popular fruit. But little by little, they brought more and more trees, propagated it, and now it's very popular. This is an introduction to traditional, the presentation is an introduction to traditional Persian percussion instruments, including, this is called DAF. Or trophy drum, or chrom drum. This one is called Darbuke, and this one is called Tombak, and some people call it Dumbak. Also, you can see Zar as another name for it. Some of these have really more than one name. So tonight I will uh, share a brief history first. Then we will take a look at the structure of these drums. And also, I will provide you with some basic playing techniques. It seems that uh, regarding uh, going to the next one is really difficult with yeah, the system. I don't know why. Okay. Anybody uh, else is a drummer? Okay, Dave. Very good. Um, I want to know who is interested in learning how to drum. <laughs> so, because the lessons that I have is basically for people who are really interested in learning how to drum. Okay? Anybody just curious? That most of you, okay. Mostly you are curious about it. Okay. Some uh, advantages of drumming. One of the researchers is Dr. Bittman. 
when he introduced drumming to different patients, he noticed that basically drumming reduces tension and stress. Also, uh, it controls chronic pain with people who had lots of pain. Because repeating a mantra to yourself and the same as TM or trans mental meditation, it relaxes you basically. Uh, it also places you in the now. And if you don't think about the past or the future, basically you are going to be happier possible. Um, also based on this research, they say that it's synergy and some people who did studies besides Dr. Whitman said that it aligns your chakras or energy points. That's why sometimes when you listen to a drum, you become energized. So if you take a look at these, I have some questions. It will hone your skills for playing Jeopardy in the future. <laughs> <laughs> so which one do you think is the oldest one? We take a look at the structure. Which one has the simplest structure, yes? Which one is it? Middle one? <laughs> no. This one. Probably not. Oh, I didn't yes. think about those. Yes. <laughs> But uh, although, you know, frame drums have been here for thousands and thousands of years, and some trace it back actually to 165,000 years ago. Wow. 165,000 years ago, this is a modern version, version of it. That one is a traditional one that has these jingles. So basically some of the drums are like this without jingles, some like this. Also regarding the shape, mostly frame drums are round, but there are some which are square, octagonal, or hexagonal. So you have different types. Sometimes these come also with the built-in trampoline. Tambourine. So the building tambourine and the two are in one. Traditionally they, they were like that. So this is basically one of the oldest drums, but at the beginning it was with tambourine as one. Another name for this drum in Persian is Dayere. Dayere has fewer rings than this one. And recently, actually, the name was changed. The reason that I want to provide you with a brief history is that to see that this is a very old musical instrument, but recently, the name was changed. Before it was in public domain, you know there were a lot of musical instruments in public do domain and they were not patented. But little by little, people try to own them. And recently this happened actually. And if we go to this, you can say Rowan Storm changed the name of Dyre to Rowan Storm Dyre. So it's no longer called Dyre. And she became a celebrity in different countries because people don't know about the history of this. And they thought that she really created this. Uh, yeah. Because in her speeches, she said, I created and designed this. And uh, you should know that there are still other musical instruments from the Middle East in the public domain. And Ohio University Innovation Center possibly is waiting for new startups to take another musical instrument which is in public domain and somebody can turn it into a big business. This is 
uh, the one that basically is designed by Remo, yeah. but it's not really a new design because they call it um, thin line drums. But if you take a look at drums that are in museums, and when they excavated tombs, they noticed that there were drums inside. There were really a skillful artisans long time ago that they were able to have very thin line drums thousands of years ago. So it's not really something new, but they advertise it as something new. I'm going to give you a clue because possibly this is a difficult question. The name of the country starts with A. It's not Athens, it's not Armenia, it's a country adjacent to Armenia. Any guesses? Yes, excellent. Azerbaijan, yes. This is their bankrupt and it's called Manet. And they have DAF actually, you can see it in the middle. Yeah. And other traditional musical instruments. The DAF is the yellow? Yes, the yellow one. And if you take a look, it seems that their banknotes or the, their money is worth more than a dollar <laughs> and more than a euro. <laughs> so I said maybe in the future they will have picture of Rowan storm possibly, yes. <laughs> because now things have changed. Okay? A lot of beats are repeated. Repeated beats are like drum. Which one do you think is the goblet drum? <laughs> yes. Excellent. Very good. The goblet drum basically is called tombak. Tombak tombak or zab. This is the goblet. Okay. This is the national drum of Iran or Persia. Tombak has different parts. You can see the head, you can see the body, you can see the neck, and you can see two openings, one here and one at the top. Um, the head is glued to it, so you cannot really tune this. And the skin itself is natural skin. So when it's natural skin, the sound really changes with temperature. If it is hot and dry, the sound is really good. Hot and dry. Okay. Uh, this is uh, used with classic uh, music or with modern music or with folk music. And usually the players improvise. They can accommodate all types of musicians. Uh, the history goes back to 1100 BC. And uh, the names are Tombak, Dombak, or Zarp. It all starts with part of a tree trunk. And AEP workers in Athens cut down a lot of trees and put the uh, trunks, cuts of that in different parts. Possibly that's a good business yeah. that somebody <laughs> starts building these because some of these are really very, very beautiful and people just make these by hand. So it starts with that. Then they have different sizes small or big, and usually they carve this, they do everything by hand, so lots of artisan work. The opening, you can see the top and the bottom one, these are the parts, the skin, the large opening which is at the top, the body, the throat, and the small opening at the bottom. The features is that you play it with fingers and hand. You can carry it. It's a single drum head. And as I said before, it's natural skin. It's not synthetic. But it's possible to have also synthetic skin. 
the body is made of wood, clay, or metal. You can see also a metal one there. Sometimes it's plain and sometimes decorated. There are really decorated ones, stained or lacquered. You can see beautiful antique pieces, more ornate, and you can see even carved ones like this one. Another one is this one, which is uh, basically trophy drum or crumb drum. And usually people who play this, they can walk and play this. This is um, also natural skin. So if it's dry and hot, the sound is really good. If it is not dry, the sound is not really good. So you can ha play it like that, or you can play it like this. So, possible to walk or to sit down and play this. Another name for this is Zarb, or Zarb Zurkhane. There are singers and players in sports clubs, traditional sports clubs, that they play this and sing, and then the martial artists swing these Indian clubs to develop upper body strength. And some of these weigh like 100 pounds. And because of the rhythm, they do not knock other people out. So they have a special rhythm. And they are next to each other and they do this for hours. And now there are actually clubs like this in California, in Europe, in Australia, and also in Canada. And it's very, very entertaining to watch one. Also, you can download two back apps and you can combine different beats and make your own music. You can also read these books and this uh, drum for dummies is here in the Athens Library and it's uh, an e-book actually. And it has all types of information about old or traditional and modern percussion instruments. Also, it tells you how to make your own drum if you like to. The ones with natural skin, like this one, this one, and that big one, they are sensitive to humidity and temperature. If it's humid, it doesn't really work. OK, now playing techniques. With this one, Basically, they say with tombak, you improvise a lot. You come up with your own techniques. But people who play this, first of all, they use, again, three basic uh, strokes, which is this one. This is tom. Actually, this is called tom back. This is tom, and this is back. Tom back. Tom back. Okay. Um, if you want to have treble sounds, you can use these two fingers. This is bass sound. Sound. Now we are going to combine these sounds and come up with something. You can come up with anything. This is the way that you have this and you should basically sit in a seat like this. If it's higher than this, it's going to roll down. That's why I have this one. And also it's good to have something 
a type of foot rise under your foot, then it will be in place and it will not roll down. So if you want to play this, there are different techniques. This is one for example. Decoration is involved in this. Decoration means you add something as a decor to this. And people come up with all sorts of uh, creative uh, strokes. For example, you can do this. Then, some people I'm going to just slow it down for the sake of clarity of notes and also for you to learn so I have a slow tempo otherwise they do it sometimes fast so if you want to do this it's just like this you make it faster it will sound like that then this is dum. is tack or treble sound so I'm going to do this then I can increase the number I can instead of one I can have two at a time so I can say this goes. It's basically like this. This is a snapping. basically says snap finger number four three and two uh, I showed you snapping this is finger one two three and four so I am snapping finger one two three oh two three and four two three and four. two three four with finger four you have two options you can do it like this or you can do it like this so this is just a snapping next their book which is this one okay and uh, if you take a look at the history 2800 BC they found actually in excavations some cone-shaped and cup-shaped 
drums made of clay. This is also made of clay. And sometimes they have excellent designs, and this one is one of them basically, but there are better ones than this too. Some of them are very fancy, like this. And they can have synthetic or natural skin. This is synthetic, this is just plastic. And uh, the top can be removed, and you can tune it with this Allen wrench. So this one is tunable. Um, also, there are Darbuka the apps you can download. OK, the way that you play this, these are basically the strokes. This is called doom, but it is not like this. It is like this. If it is that, like this, this is called a slap. Slap. But this is doom. Doom. With your left hand, you just use one finger. This one you use three fingers. Both of these sounds are treble, but this is the bass one. So if I want to play, I can just have different strokes like this. two different patterns. For example, this one, five notes. This one, five notes. So I'm going to now combine the five plus five, ten notes, and come up with a rhythmic pattern. also uh, this one you cannot use the snaps because you can see this is not covered with the skin so that one is covered with the skin but this one is different so with this one people can do different things for example in belly dancing this is very popular Louder the more movement. with a quotation from Rumi. I said in 1207, he said, we rarely hear the inward music, but we are all dancing to it nevertheless. So basically, music is innate. Also, the rhythms are innate. And from the time that babies are in the womb, they are exposed to the rhythmic uh, patterns of heartbeat, also blood rushing. So naturally, everybody has a tendency to like drumming because of that, because it's something that we have been really uh, brought up with, and the rhythms are there. And basically, they say through drumming, you can align all these energy points in your body, which are called chakras. And shamans have strong belief in this, 
that it really works. Okay. I have five minutes if you have any questions. Thank you so much for your help. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Anything? Is the wood that this is uh, walnut or mulberry. Huh. So I said AEP has cut down a lot yes. of trees. Yes, yes. I don't think they cut down any walnut or no. mulberry trees. <laughs> walnut or mulberry. Both work. That is, the middle one is so beautifully. This one. Ornate. But oh. this one breaks. Yeah. This one doesn't break. <laughs> I love the beautiful thing. If this one rolls down, Correct. You don't have a drum anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it is beautiful, but the top, the head is plastic. But this one it has really a good head. Yes, yes. And uh, I would like to thank Mr. Baston for bringing this dehumidifier. <laughs> Otherwise, it doesn't really have a good sound. That's nice. If it is humid. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you know, I was teaching before, I really didn't have time to play this, but when I was a kid in our home, we had a thin line drum, and sometimes we just played with it. And I remember that and say that now, Rowan Storm owns basically yeah. that is drum that we had long time ago, because they changed even the name now. But I like to play this to just relieve the stress, and it really relaxes me. And some time ago on Ohio University campus, there was a drumming group that was called Tao or Teo. Yeah. Tao, anybody went to that? Yes. That was really therapeutic. And when I watched that, for several days, I had a special energy that I said, I am going to pursue this more. Ah. So it really energizes you if you believe in it. Do you do it by yourself? Yes, I just do it by myself. I never had any teachers or anybody. Do you teachers. do it also together with others? Not really, I don't know anybody. <laughs> I bet there are people. Yes, I, I like to have a growth. Pardon? Audience. <laughs> I, I would join you. I play the drums as well. Oh, you do? Which drum do you play? I usually play the drum set. Oh, drum set. Jazz or rock bands, uh -huh. but I also have a, I play a djembe. I see. Yeah. Very good. OK. Yeah. We'll exchange numbers, maybe. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get together sometime. It's good, really, to play. And uh, also, Mr. Baston, I would like, uh, he is a good drummer. I would like to hear him also sometime <laughs> in the future, I hope. Yes, it's good to have a group. Do you know 40 people in this group that I said Kuban yeah. are playing drums together? 40. And it's really fun. You should listen to it. I, I will. And in Athens, why not to have a group? Maybe in the future. Yeah. And when it gets warm outside, I think it would be quite popular. Yes, for sure. And come back and play at Athens County Public Library. What okay. do you think, Todd? Very good. Uh, it, it's sort of interesting. We use uh, more of the hand drums in music. Pit. We also have similar drums uh -huh. in the department. Um, but each year I have an a individual I had in Cleveland for many years, a person with autism, and he's coming next weekend. He comes once a year. We get a group together, and one of the music-making things that we do is we have a drum circle with the hand drums and with some to jump. Jambes. Great. Okay. Um, and this is a big deal now in music therapy. It wasn't when I was coming through, mm -hmm. as I mentioned, I'm more traditionally based. But um, he is right a part of it. He's very bright. I mean, he has perfect pitch and all. And we do all this with the students on the floor, different types of percussive instruments, primarily hand and mm -hmm. jambes. But um, he loves it. Um, Interesting. 
that he has to initiate rhythms. Everybody initiates their own rhythm and passes Everything. it around. It's pretty cool. So maybe in the future we'll again see each other and yes. we will have a bigger group. That's right. I and think we will play in a students. group. That would be great. That would be, yeah, that that'll you, be fun. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank for you. Thank you. attending. Good. I appreciate that. Good. You might be wondering why I am clapping. I am clapping because you were listening. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a good night. You too.